Greetings gamers and welcome back to Top 10 Gaming. I'm Connor Monroe and this is a marathon, a series of videos all put into one for your viewing convenience. This one is about Fortnite Creepypastas, a series which we had before even I was on the channel, featuring hosts like Kelly and Johnny. So let's sit down and enjoy, shall we? Fortnite may be the biggest current gaming sensation taking the world by storm, but there's a darker side to the game that has spawned online, thanks to creative fans and storytellers. Similar to other popular games, Fortnite has been the inspiration behind many a creepypasta and internet urban legend. But unlike many other games, the fever and quality that goes into these stories is unparalleled. So back by popular demand, we're returning to our list of the top 10 Fortnite creepypastas with a part 2. We'll be seeing some familiar storytellers on this list from our part 1, but with brand new creepypastas to give you the shivers. Also be sure to check out their YouTube channels after you watch this video for other great creepypastas too. But in the meantime, let's get into our list. And number 10, Rage Quit. This creepypasta comes from YouTuber Flip the Script, who's pretty much the king of Fortnite creepypastas on YouTube. We featured a few of their other creepypastas in our last video too, so be sure to check them out at some point. Anywho, this creepypasta is about a player who decided to hop on duos with a stranger when all of his friends were away on vacation. Wanting to play with someone who had their mic on, he almost left the game when finally his new partner said, Hello? It was a young child. And while our protagonist normally plays with older players, when he lands with the kid, they actually mesh up really well, managing to knock out two other duos right from the get go. That's when he hears Hears the kid politely say, just a second, to someone in the room with him. The protagonist asks if the kid's talking to his parents, but the kid says, no, it's my guardian. The kid then proceeds to tell him that it's his guardian angel. The protagonist tries to shrug it off as the kid having an active imagination. But as the game progresses, the kid keeps talking to his guardian angel. And it gets a little weird. It sounds like things are being thrown around the kid's room in the background. So the protagonist asks if everything is alright over there. And the kid replies, yeah, she just doesn't like it when I don't listen, but I'm getting off after this game. Five minutes go by and he hears the kid say, I told you I'm going to get off after this game. The protagonist then hears something chilling. A voice replies to the kid in the background saying, now, 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 growing more and more sinister with each word. The kid's character in the game starts to lag and glitch, and then the player hears the kid crying. Then out of nowhere, the kid is disconnected from the party, from the game, and from Xbox Live. The player tried to message the kid a few days later on Xbox Live, but never got a reply. In at number 9, we eliminated you. This creepypasta is a take on another classic Fortnite creepypasta. So the narrator comes home home from school one day and decides to hop on Fortnite. As he's playing a match, he keeps seeing other players who have the name We Eliminated You as their username. They were all wearing the same Cuddle Team Leader skin. Now staying out of the way, he watched as all of these Cuddle Team Leaders fought their way through one another. Despite trying to stay out of the fray though and wait for the opportune time to jump into the action, he was eliminated, seemingly out of nowhere, taken out by one of the users named We Eliminated You. Pissed off, he was about to start up a new match when he received a strange text message from an unknown number that read, get ready for your final elimination. That's when he received another text. It was a picture of his house. He called the cops. When he looked outside the window, that's when he saw him. A man across the street looking directly at him wearing the Cuddle Bear Leader mask. The narrator went to hide when he realized that his back door was unlocked. Taking a chance, he tried to sneak downstairs only to come face to face with the Cuddle Team Leader. That's when the police arrived, tackling the intruder to the ground. Up next, number 8, The Happenings from Codename Horror. The narrator in this story begins by saying they are over at their friend's house, a friend named Quinn, on a Friday night for a sleepover along with their buddy Jake. They all decide to play Fortnite, having brought all of their consoles over to the house. The three of them turned them on to play and started playing in squads. But this is where things got weird. They needed a fourth player. And when that fourth squad mate joined up, they had a weird gamer tag. It was actually pretty garbage. When they tried to talk to them, all they could hear was breathing until a high pitched noise pierced through their speakers, breaking all of their headsets, forcing them to use the audio from their TVs instead. They started the match. Almost immediately, there was a bright flash of light that came out of their screens. When it was gone, their friend, Jake, had entirely disappeared. It was just Quinn and our narrator remaining. They heard a crash coming from another room in the house, so they went to investigate, and there was Jake, lying on the floor, barely breathing, as if he had fallen through the ceiling. The TV started to glitch, and a face appeared. A deathly grim one, warning them that if they continued to play, the same thing would happen to our narrator and Quinn. But regardless, they kept playing. Eventually, they made it through to the top 10 of the match. Quinn was killed. When our narrator looked over at him in real life, he was entirely still with a trickle of blood coming down from his mouth. It was just our narrator and their fourth squad member. All of a sudden, the house in real life lost power. Our narrator turned around to see the face from the TV. Next thing they knew, the air was being sucked from their lungs and they entirely blacked out. When they woke up, they were in the hospital. They had been in a coma for five months. And their friends? 
they had died from seizures. And at number seven, Error 666. Error 666 comes from YouTube channel O1G. The story is about a gamer who, after turning on Fortnite, noticed that something seemed strange. Two days prior, he had received an update for the game, and ever since installing it, things were really off. The screen kept flickering on and off, and despite changing his HDMI cord and looking at his PlayStation thoroughly, it still happened anyway. He assumed it was a bug, and his friends didn't have any problems either. Now, one night at 9 p.m., it got really bad. The game was distorting, the textures in the game had changed the color red, and it looked really hellish. His party chat sounded like demonic voices rather than the voices of his friends. He couldn't make out what they were saying, but their voices were violent and terrifying. That's when an error message popped up on his screen that read, Error 666. Please turn off the game. And that's where the creepypasta ends. Short and sweet, I guess? And at number six, no taunt, no cry. This creepypasta follows the story of a player who strongly dislikes taunting and trolling. He says that nothing sucks more than being so close to defeating an opponent only to lose and have them do a dance emote over top of you. He tells of a monster in the game who kidnaps players who taunt others after they've killed them. He saw it happen in the flesh once. The player was sucked away by this monster with a notification that read that the player had disconnected from the game, and they were never to be seen again. Some think that this is Epic Games' way of trying to enforce some sort of disciplinary action. Others say that it's an evil entity within the game. The player describes how he was playing a squad match with his friends, and how one of his friends said that he shouldn't taunt others for fear of being banned. But one of his buds didn't care. He shot down some opponents and immediately started taunting them with an emote. That's when the player saw the monster. A riff opened up in the game and a cage appeared. And when the monster caught his friend, he was thrown inside of the cage. They never heard from his friend again. In at number five, Tomato Head Terror. This creepypasta dives into the hypothetical history of one of the locations on Fortnite's map. Tomato Head Terror tells the story of Tomato Man's lost head and the rivalry it had with Greasy Grove's beef boss. The rivalry goes way back, between the opposing town's pizzeria and the burger joint Durr Burger. Durr Burger expanded all across the towns of Fortnite, being adored by many, and Beef Boss enjoyed the profits that his successful chain brought him. But there was one place that he had in common. Conquered, Tomato Town. The beef boss headed to Tomato Town to offer Tomato Head a deal, but Tomato Head declined his offer. But no matter how many offers Beef Boss made, Tomato Head would continue to reject him. So the beef boss plotted a different way to get what he wanted. He decided to destroy Tomato Town and Tomato Head, burning the town to the ground. It dragged Tomato Head out of his burning pizzeria and decapitated him. Beef Boss then displayed his head as a trophy, as a warning to anyone who wanted to compete with his restaurant. Don't try. Up next, number four, Wrath of the Ice King. This creepypasta comes from Mr. Gruesome on YouTube. The Ice King ruled over his land as a dictator. He was hated, and if anyone did anything against his authority, they would receive some sort of severe punishment. Now, it was decided amongst the Ice King's closest advisors and subjects that the only way people of Fortnite could ever live in peace was if the Ice King was assassinated. They decided to target him when he was his most vulnerable, when he was sitting on his throne on top of Polar Peak. His subjects quietly killed all of his guards one by one, and with his defenses low, entered the throne room confronting him. The Ice King laughed at his subjects, declaring that there was no feasible way to kill him. His subjects all attacked him. One by one, he laughed at them, snapping their necks, slicing them in half, and sending his ice hounds after them, who tore at their flesh. The very last subject who remained standing of the six tried to run for his life. The Ice King caught him, and then beat him to a pulp. The next day, he addressed the people of his kingdom, threatening death to anyone who committed treason, and that their families would be brutally sentenced to death as well, facing the wrath of the Ice King. Moving into number three, The Boy from Wailing Woods from Mr. Gruesome. This is the story of a player who, with their group of friends, would go to Wailing Woods religiously, always landing in the trees and managing to get loot and resources like no other in that area. But this one time when their friends weren't online, they decided to do the usual routine anyway. Despite not being the best player as they admitted, they tried a solo game, hoping that Wailing Woods would still give them a decent start. They managed to get all of the loot chests there and got a decent selection of weapons. They moved on, making their way to an RV in the game. Next to it was a strange item. It looked like a doll of a little boy, but it was visibly laughing. Curious, they picked it up. All of a sudden, that RV's door swung open. Scared half to death, the player watched as a pale white body came out of it, grabbed the boy out of their player's hands, and then went to a nearby bench and started cradling it. So naturally, the player shot at them. The white figure then got up and began to scream, do not touch Danny. Alerted, the player's mother in real life ran into the room to see what was wrong when her kid was screaming. The player turned to face her, about to explain, but his mother just stared expressionless at the TV and walked back out of the room. When the player turned around, their screen was actually pitch black. So the player tried to reboot their Xbox, but it was no use. Annoyed, they decided to go over to their friend's house and told them the story, and they laughed about it. As the player was walking home though, in real life, they cut through a park. That's when they saw the unimaginable, a white figure cradling a doll that looked just like the one he had found in the game. Talk about eerie. Moving on to number two, 
fear in the fields. Another one from Flip the Script here. This creepypasta is told entirely in a demonic voice. The voice states how it used to be so lonely, but now it sees all. All of the victories, the defeats, everything in Fortnite. It can hear everything players say. The fights they have over Mike, the cheers they shout when they win, the sadness when they lose, and the voice of mothers telling them to get off the game. Everything. But they've also heard worse things too. They recount multiple stories, one of which includes a player who got into a fight with their mother. The mother screamed at the player to get off Fortnite, but the player wanted to keep going. That's when they heard the flames. The mother shouted that the house was on fire. He heard the mother try to get the gamer off, but then they were engulfed by flames. He heard the sound of the house collapsing around them. Another time, he heard a player go AFK as their father beat them to a pulp and they cried. They say that they hear the good and the bad. So next time you pass through their fields, fear not. The voice may be your only witness, listening in on whatever has happened to you. Overall, this one scores big points for the creepy demonic voice, so definitely go give it a listen if you want the full scare, guys. And finally, in at number one, Stream Stalker. Let's end off this list with one final creepypasta from Flipless Script. In it, the narrator says that he streams a lot. He streams on YouTube instead of Twitch because he has a larger audience on there. And he's never revealed his real name, since he has a pretty decent following and didn't want to be annoyed on social media about streaming. So this one Friday night rolls around, and as he's playing, there's a guy who keeps spamming his chat, saying really rude stuff and harassing people. His moderators ban the guy. But shortly afterwards, the dude reappears, saying in the chat, Hey, you can't ban me. The streamer then tells his mods to ban him already, getting annoyed. They claim they already did, and they go ahead and try to ban him again. The guy starts going off in the chat saying, Tyler, you can't ban me. How did he know his first name? Now thinking it was some guy with two accounts with a similar name, just trying to troll him, the streamer tells his mods to ban them again. A few minutes later, after things seem normal, the banned user appears once again. This time he says, you're going to regret that, Tyler. Does Best Buy know that you call out sometimes to make content? Tyler freaks out. How does he know where he works? The user then says, don't worry, Tyler, and states his address, saying that he'll see him soon. Tyler panics, ends his stream, and calls the police. The police say that there isn't anything they can do since the chat wasn't currently active after he ended the stream. So Tyler messages one of his mods and asks them to start up a new stream again so that they can get the police onto this guy. Tyler then goes around his house and double checks all of his locks. That's when he gets a message from his mod, who tells him to get out of his house right now. Tyler asks why, and the mod says to go to his channel and watch the stream. Tyler pulls it up. Someone else is streaming on his account that isn't his mod. The thumbnail is dark. He clicks on the video and sees that it's a stream of his house in real life. He can see himself through one of the windows. So Tyler turns off the lights, and then through his window he looks out. That's when he sees someone dressed up as the Raven. Then his narration ends, and it switches over to the voice of a police officer, who states that Tyler was stabbed repeatedly, along with a warning about being safe while you stream online. All right, there we have it, friends. So that is a total of 40 Fortnite creepy passes that we've covered on the channel. That's a whole lot of creepy passes. Let us know in those comments below which ones were your favorites. If you dug this video, show us some love and hit that like button, and subscribe if you want more creepy passes just like this one. If you haven't seen them yet, check out our parts one through three for more Fortnite creepy passes too. We've even have a playlist flashing on your screen right now that may tickle your fancy. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you all in our next video. We are back at it again with another Fortnite Creepy Passes list. This time, part five. That's that's 50 of them we've done. Now, if you're new here, Creepy Passes are online urban legends, all of which aim to be as spooky and scary and obviously creepy as possible. Over the past year, there's been an explosion of Fortnite themed Creepy Passes on the web, and this is our series where we highlight and count down some of our favorites. We also suggest that after our list, you go and check out the full stories themselves. They're really worth giving a listen to. And many of these creators have other great Creepy Passes that you'll love on their channels too. So with that in mind, let's jump in. And at number 10, The Hacker. Let's start off our list with a creepy passive from the king of Fortnite creepy passes himself, Flipless Script. This is the story of a 25 year old who begins his narration by discussing how his generation gets a bad rap. He reveals that he's a hacker who typically does low end schemes, taking small amounts off of debit or credit cards. But one day he decided he wanted more of a challenge and decided to set his sights on Fortnite. Now it wasn't about the money, it was more so about the notoriety. After hours of prep work, he managed to gain access into Fortnite, with the game mistaking him 
as an admin, which allowed him to ban whomever he wanted and to give whomever he wanted V Bucks. So a thought comes across his mind: What if he created an account, added a crap ton of V Bucks to it, and then sold it online? He could make a solid chunk of change. With this plan in mind, he decided to call it a night when something caught his eye in the system: a list of people's names who had been banned by Epic Games themselves. Curious, he took a peek. It was organized into categories. He clicked on the miscellaneous category and clicked on one player's name. Honchu to see the details of their ban. It read that Honchu was permanently banned for slaying five players in real life. Honchu is a modern day Bloody Mary and has not been arrested or caught yet and was suspected to be a hacker. Accidentally, the hacker had said Honchu's name three times in a row, having read the description out loud. That's when he heard someone whispering behind him. Our narrator turns around to see his door slowly opening, silhouette of a man standing there in his hallway. He had a knife. His mask had pixels on it. He walks over to the narrator, puts the knife on his throat, and says, Make that the Slangs of six people. Up next, number nine, Forever Gone by Mr. Gruesome. Mr. Gruesome is another creepy pasta creator that we featured on list of ours in the past. Their stuff is pretty awesome. This story begins by our narrator telling us that their tale initially occurred a month and a half ago. After school one day, he had started up a match of Fortnite. Seeing that his best friend was there, he joined their lobby and plugged in his mic. But before he could say hi, he heard his friend sobbing. Then he heard his friend say, Kyle, why did you join? Why? Why? He kept repeating over and over, I trust you with my life, ignoring Kyle's questioning. When the duo started up, his friend had changed his tone entirely, as if he was never sobbing. The game carried out as normal. Out of nowhere then, his friend gets sniped. Our narrator goes to help him, but his friend screams into his mic, no, we have no time, just survive, we cannot lose this game. Our narrator, distracted, gets sniped too. But then in real life, he feels a large push of air. In his headphones, an ear piercing shriek deafens him. By the time he comes to and gets to the pregame screen, he he sees a player that he's never met before, who comes up to him. In his headset, he hears someone whisper, game over. Freaking out in real life, he runs over to his friend's house to check on them, only to have a woman open the door who wasn't his mother. He didn't recognize her. He asked the strange woman where his friend was, but she has no idea who he's talking about. His friend since had disappeared entirely. No one remembers him, except for our narrator. In at number 8, you hear that? This creepypasta comes from YouTuber Big Mama Eternal. It tells the story of a 15 year old girl named Annie, who at the start of the tale is found in her room by her mother, surrounded by blood and debris. Her room has been trashed, all of her toys have been disfigured, and stuffed animals have been decapitated. Annie tells her mom that the singing ghost girl, Lily, from the game, was responsible. So. How did this come to be? Well, before her room was trashed, Annie was playing Fortnite. She had heard a rumor about a ghost in the game and decided to check it out, thinking that it wasn't real. Playing a solo game, she eventually found this ghostly entity, and it began to talk to her. Rather than address her by her username, SweetLover27, the ghost called her by her real name, Annie. The ghost asked her, How many lives do you get if you die in real life? Freaked out, Annie tried to unplug her Xbox. Even with the cord unplugged, the system and game wouldn't turn off. That's when she saw one of her friend's avatars. But they didn't look like they normally did. Their eyes were black and they were screaming out Annie's name. In a gruesome show, her friend's avatar then screamed as their character's head popped off. This is when Annie's avatar started acting out outside of her control, chopping up her friend's avatar. The ghost girl chimed in once more, laughing at the bloody exhibition. That's when the strangest thing happened. The body of the avatar came flying through her television, filling up her room with blood, bones, and guts. And at 7, The Forever Game. This one comes from a YouTuber named Mr. Squidzle. The narrator tells of how he plays Fortnite for hours and hours. He describes how time is always a problem for him, and how he constantly wonders if he'll have enough time to sneak in another match, never knowing if he'll end up getting knocked out early or if he'll make the long haul and do well. One time, on a day that he states was May 14th, he was playing a solo match and having a pretty good game. He managed to make it to the top five. He knocks out one player and then he notices that another three are locked in an epic duel which causes all of them to be eliminated. Now being the last of two, he sees his final opponent approaching him out of the corner of his eye. Out of nowhere, a cold chill runs down his spine. He gets nervous, but he just talks it up to, you know, the anticipation of the game. He and his foe end up building quite high up into the sky as they avoid each other's firing. But that's when something odd happens. A bright hole opens up in the ground below his character. He falls in. He doesn't die, but everything around him goes pitch black. Not just in the game, but in real life. He thinks he's dreaming. The game comes back on. He can't shut off the game and he can't physically stand or move, so he plays. The match starts over and he's at Snobby Shores. He gets shot at and his character dies. That's when he gets a really bad headache in real life. The match starts over immediately. He starts to hear a voice repeating over and over again in a whisper, that's not enough. So he continues to play. He wins matches, but they start over again. Fearing that this will never end, he eventually hears the voice say, one last match. He dies in that match though, placing 8th. But then another one starts and the headache comes back. He starts to scream at the voice but there's no response. The next match that starts is absurd. 
There's no map, no other players, just his character with a shotgun. He's inside of a house, but everything inside of it looks really strange. That's when he realizes that inside the house, it looks just like his own house in real life. He moves his character, and in real life, he hears steps from upstairs. Now, in real life, he's in the basement. So he moves his character to the basement door of the house. The door opens in the game, and it opens in real life too. Next thing he knows, in the game he sees himself sitting in front of his TV. Now, with his character, he approaches himself. He moves his character to the TV and shoots it. Now in real life, the TV explodes and everything goes white. He wakes up on the basement floor in what feels like hours later. He notices that his PlayStation has been blown to pieces and he even finds a shotgun shell under his couch. Everything seems fine though, but that's when he looks at his phone. The date is now November 27th. Up next at 6, Playground. This creepypasta is from a YouTuber named Mr. Gruesome, and is about the playground mode in the game. The protagonist in the story tells about how he jumped at the chance to check out the playground mode, and when he loaded up the game and landed in Dusty Divot, he soon realized that he was the only player on the island in this particular match. Tad freaked out, he was like, hey, I'll work on my building skills, and started to harvest material. That's when he heard laughter, and it sounded like the laughter of a child. After finding some loot, he was about to leave Dusty when he heard more laughter. Turning around, he saw a default skin facing him, despite being the only one in the match. The default skin started acting strangely, running towards the player. So the player pulled out their green pump and shot the default skin right in the head, but it did nothing. That's when the skin stopped directly in front of the player and in a demonic voice it said, leave and never return or else. Immediately afterwards, the player's PS4 and TV shut off on its own. And at number 5, The Laughing Man. The Laughing Man, despite having some major sound issues, is a pretty decent creepypasta from YouTuber Funtime Flash. The story starts off with the player describing how he and his friends encountered a terrifying player added to their squad who had a sinister laugh, one that was quite unsettling. They eventually finished that match and hopped on another squad one, thinking that there was no way they'd ever see this guy again. Four games later, he appeared in their lobby, and the laughing would not stop. They tried to leave the match, but couldn't. The narrator even tried to unplug his Xbox. That's when the laughing man started screaming, and the player got a text message from an unknown number. It was a photo of him playing Fortnite. His Xbox then just shut off on its own. Slowly, the player went over to his window, and that's when he saw him, a man whose face was covered in horrific stitches. He stood there laughing. The player called the police, locking all of the doors and windows in his house. The man started banging on his window, and his Xbox just turned back on. The laughing was even louder than ever. Finally, the police had come. He looked outside to see the terrifying man was being put into handcuffs and towed away into the back of a cop car. He later found out that this man had been stalking kids on Fortnite. Up next at 4, Filter Mature Language. This is the story of a player who discovered a new setting in the game the filter mature language setting. After turning it off, he realized his friend was online. It was a friend he hadn't played with in months, so he was eager to join him in a match. After getting killed by someone wearing the raven skin, they started up another match, but surprise surprise, they were killed by the exact same player wearing that raven skin. Except they noticed something strange. Now there was blood all over the skin. Over and over again, they would find themselves in matches, always ending up getting killed by this raven player, who had more and more blood on their outfit as they progressed. All of a sudden, his power in his house went off. He turned around and the raven skin was right there. He ran, freaking out. The raven chased him. He called his friend and told him what had happened in a panic, and his friend told him the only way that he would survive is if he went back to the game and turned the filter back on. And as soon as he did, the raven disappeared. He no longer saw a raven covered in blood in any of the matches. So he decided after that he would never turn the filter off again. True story or just a way for parents to keep their kids away from swearing in Fortnite? Hmm. Moving on to number three, The Ghost of Haunted Hills. This one comes from YouTube channel creepypasta.com, presented by Eric Alden. This one dives into a mystery about Fortnite discovered by a player who wanted to see what all the hype surrounding the game was about. After watching hours on Twitch, he tried it out himself and downloaded it. His first game was awful, and he was knocked out of the match pretty much immediately. This happened quite a few times too, so he decided to look up a tutorial on YouTube and get some tips on how to not die right from the get go. This one tutorial suggested that new players should land on the outskirts of the map, somewhere like Haunted Hills. So. That's what our protagonist did, and it helped quite a bit. He managed to place in the top 10 in his first game after the tutorial, so he kept landing there every single match. By 4am, he decided to head to bed, satisfied and really excited about playing Fortnite again. Two weeks later, he was still playing Fortnite, but after every few games he started to notice something. Whenever he landed at Haunted Hills, he kept seeing something out of the corner of his eye, but each time, he was alone. No one else was around him. He figured it was a glitch. He even recorded his gameplay once, but even then, when watching back at the moments where he swore he saw something, nothing was there on the recording. So he did some research on Haunted Hills and found out that the location was actually suggested by a player. And Epic Games liked the suggestion so much that they actually put it in the game. The original suggestion post featured a drawing. And after doing some more research, the player discovered that the drawing was also used in another post by the same poster to describe his PTSD about his family dying. And
and how this was the location where they died and what it looked like. Our protagonist naturally freaked out a little bit about how dark of a backstory Haunted Hills had. But that's when he realized that maybe what he was seeing out of the corner of his eye were the ghosts of this guy's dead family members. Up next, number two, the dark map. Here we have another one from Flipless Script. It follows the story of a YouTuber who is hungry for subscribers. He's going through his emails when he receives one from a strange email address. It's a bunch of numbers and letters. About to dump it into his junk mail, he sees that it contains something interesting. It's an image of a new Fortnite map that was supposed to be released on Halloween but was scrapped by Epic Games, allegedly. Thinking he could use this to his advantage and get more subscribers on his channel, he ends up taking this anonymous person up on their offer to check out this map and play it. The guy tells him that the experience that the YouTuber will have on the map will be different than what he has had. Thinking that that's odd, the YouTuber listens to the instructions that the guy gives him and turns the blur effect on his PC to optimize the gameplay. But when the map loads up, he sees why. It's strobing, and it puts him in almost a trance. It gets weirder. He starts to trip out and sees all these traumatic experiences that he had had in his life in the past. In a state of psychosis, he's hooked, watching as his father, a firefighter, died. And to his shock and horror, he's then put into his father's shoes and the same event replays. He drops into hell and he sees himself burning down to bones. He then opens up the email to look at the map and it's completely different than what he saw. He sees corpses of dead players making up mountains. A skin that he doesn't recognize with red horns that looks a lot like the devil begins to chase him. The YouTuber runs away as the devil skin tells him that he's the boogeyman and that he'll see him in his dreams tonight. And finally at number one, Disconnected. Our final creepy pasta on this list is Disconnected. It tells of a player reminiscing about season one and his pal CJ, who a while back had moved out of state. CJ and the protagonist were high school buddies, and their friendship flourished while playing Fortnite together, playing for hours on end. But one day, CJ just disappeared. He never returned to the game, and he never replied to the protagonist on social media, and never returned his calls. The protagonist grew worried. Months went by, and there was still radio silence. One day, someone joined the protagonist's own private game, even though the player wasn't invited. So the protagonist kicked the player out and decided to go on some solos. Afterwards, he went to bed. That night, he dreamt that he was playing with CJ, who was using the Reaper skin. They won, but then the Reaper turned into CJ himself, his actual body, which was horribly decomposed. Terrified and distressed, the protagonist woke up, hoping that his dream wasn't a reality. The next day, he played Fortnite and that odd stranger reappeared in his game yet again. When he tried to kick the player, the game wouldn't let him, so he tried to shut off his game. But his computer wouldn't shut off. The player's mic kept going off, but all he could hear was static. So the protagonist played the game anyway, and it appeared that this mysterious player was using a namebot. As he played onwards, he saw that the player's character, the Reaper, was trying to talk. Not with his mic, but in the game, with the character's mouth moving. It looked as if he was trying to make out three small words, so the protagonist asked him to say it over the mic instead. But the mic was silent. Next thing they know, they're playing 2v2. Two, and eventually, they win the game. The protagonist looked over to his partner to see that the character had disappeared from the game entirely. That's when in real life, the protagonist felt the room he was in go entirely cold. He got a chill up his spine. He turned around from his computer and standing there was CJ. But CJ didn't look human. He was rotting. The protagonist asked, CJ, what happened to you? CJ looked at him with a blank expression and his mouth moved into those three short words. He said, you left me. And from there, the creepypasta ended with the sound of a bloody impact and what seemed to be a body dropping and being dragged away. Alright, there we have it friends, which of these creepypastas was your favorite? And out of all the Fortnite creepypastas we've counted down, which one spooked you out the most? Give us a shout in those comments below. If you haven't seen part 1 of our list, be sure to head on over to our channel and check it out too. In the meantime though, thanks for watching everybody, I'll catch you all in the next video. The Fortnite community has one of the most vibrant storytelling fan bases. They have single handedly revived the creepypasta genre, giving us a slew of different terrifying stories for players and horror aficionados alike to dive into. Here on Top 10 Gaming, we have seen a whole lot of amazing creepypastas from all sorts of writers, amateur ones and professionals, and they have scared the pants off of us. So today we are returning to one of our most beloved gaming series on our channel, our list of the top 10 scariest Fortnite creepypastas. Pastas coming at you with a part six. That's a lot. That means by the end of this video, we're gonna be hitting 60 different stories. But before we begin this video, just wanna give a shout out to our wonderful sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a brand new RPG title that already has almost 10 million players and is growing. With awesome graphics, strategic gameplay, insane boss fights, and an amazing storyline, it is jam packed with never ending excitement. There are over 400 champions that you can collect and personally customize, like this dude here, Gala. 
Alec. He is an orc, and look at him. Look how dope those graphics are. That armor, ah, oh, so cool. But another one of my favorites is Sniper. Look at that bow. I mean, you could take someone out with that. The graphics are just super thoughtful and awesome and looks just like any of your other favorite RPG titles from consoles. There is literally something for everybody with this game. Whether you're in it to collect cool characters, want an awesome narrative to dive into, or you just love RPGs in general. You can even combat against other players in PvP battles in the arena, or check out the PvE in dungeons. And hey, maybe if you're lucky, you can hit us up and join our clan. Which was aptly titled Kelly Paladin. Get it? Like Paladin? So come and find us! There's also constant content updates which makes going back and playing never a stale experience. There's always something to do. And in addition to that, there is an awesome loyalty program for new players. And you get new daily login rewards for the first 90 days that you play. It's free to play too. So what are you guys waiting for? Raid Shadow Legends has an almost perfect score on the Play Store. So you know it's pretty darn great. Make sure you guys check out the link in our video description below and download Raid Shadow Legends today. You will get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program. Program, and that's really, really cool. Do it now. You guys won't regret it. And at number 10, Don't Drown by Flip Less Script. We are starting off our list with a creepypasta from the Fortnite creepypasta king himself, Flip Less Script, whose channel is full with some of the most creative and brilliant creepypastas that we have ever seen. This one is called Don't Drown. The story starts off with our narrator informing us that Starfish had just appeared in the shop for the first time. He tells us that he refused to buy her. She is evil and no one should ever purchase her. A month previously at the start of season 9, our narrator had hit up Lazy Lagoon since the pirate ship was still in the bay. And it was great for loot. Starting up a game of solos, they landed on the pirate ship, but unfortunately, three other people had landed there too. But before he knew it, a player wearing starfish, who appeared to look like a siren in the water, knocked out all of those other players. In the kill feed, it read, Drowned something he had never seen before. Slightly creeped out, he decided it would be best to move on elsewhere. More and more players began to appear in the feed as drowned, until he realized that he was the final person left with the starfish player. Leaving the boat, he hears a song in his headset. Turning around, he sees starfish. He was falling into a trance not only in the game, but in real life too, fixated on starfish. Then the two players she had drowned appeared out of the water looking like water zombies covered in algae. They began to build, so our narrator built two and then finally killed them. That's when he saw Starfish again. Her eyes, though, had changed to red. And she dragged his character under the water. He had no control. He struggled. Eventually, on the kill feed, it stated that his character had drowned. He then passed out in real life. When he woke up, he was coughing up water. Moving on to number 9, Squads. This creepypasta by YouTuber Mr. Gruesome tells of a gamer who was playing with his best friends in real life, working together as a squad. Around mid-season 4, something strange Strange started to happen though. That morning, our protagonist hopped on Fortnite to discover his pals were already online. So they went on squads together and began to play. The first match was fine, and they had a great game. So they played a second one. This time though, in the lobby, something odd occurred. Everyone aside from their group was wearing the default skin. Thinking it was a bugger of a glitch, they just shrugged it off. They hopped off at retail and then began to loot and get resources. No one else was around. They made their way out of retail and bam, that's when they saw their first player wearing that default skin. They began to build, and our protagonist and this other unknown player started to shoot at one another. That's when our protagonist began to feel pain in real life, a burning and stinging sensation. He managed to knock the other player out even though he was aching. Luckily, the pain eventually faded. His pals over Mike asked if he was okay and he told them yes, so they continued to play. That's when one of his friends noticed something weird. The game still said that there were 99 people left alive. Then they looked to the horizon and saw dozens and dozens of default skins coming towards them. Utterly confused, the squad started to build for protection. The default started firing. One by one, his pals were killed off. Somehow, our protagonist managed to survive, with only 5 health left. Frustrated, he left the match. He was once again feeling that immense pain, the burning and inching sensation. Into the mic, he exclaimed, guys, that was crazy. But no one answered him back. He tried texting them and calling them, but still no answer. He decided to head on over to one of their houses instead. But as he got there, the house was in chaos. An ambulance was parked outside and his friend's family were freaking out. Turns out, his friend had died while playing in the game. And it wasn't just this friend, it was all of them who were in the squad, except him. And at number 8, The Llama. This creepypasta comes from a channel called I Trolls Plays. It began with a player walking through Dusty Divot. Now, out of nowhere, he spots a loot llama sitting up on a tree just across from him. That's when he gets a strange feeling in real life. He just ignores it, then heads over to the llama, destroying the tree that it's on. After he chops it down and collects its resources, he can't see the llama anywhere. So he turns around, but surprise, surprise, there it is. But something's off. Its eyes look at him, as if it can see him. He jumps back, shocked, and next thing he knows, the llama's gone. Trying not to think anything of it, or assuming it was a glitch, he continues his way through the game, eventually getting to Moisty Mirrors. To his surprise, he stumbles across another llama, and its eyes move. 
It's got to be the same one. That's when he hears something bone chilling. He swears that it says to him, search me. Next thing he knows, an AR goes off and another player is attacking him. The two quickly get into a conflict with the player quickly building a base for protection. He builds a box around himself, but then he turns around. And who's inside of the box with him? The llama. He hears the words, use me. Out of options and with his opponent breaking through his defenses, he has no choice. He searches the llama and that's when this happens. And yep. Gotta love a jump scare. And at number seven, season zero. This creepy pasta comes from a YouTuber the name of Neo. The story follows the tale of a player who had signed up for the beta of Fortnite. Weirdly enough, after they signed up, the copy of Fortnite that they got wasn't one that they downloaded online. Rather, it was delivered to their door. Excited, but ignoring the weird fact that it was delivered to their door, the player popped it into their PC to give it a go. Being a big fan of other battle royale games, they were a little disappointed with what they saw. Textures were all over the place, areas of the map were unfinished, and the game was full of glitches. And overall, it seemed really unpolished. But they continued to play anyway. The season pass section was odd too. It was stated to be season 0, with season 1 being withheld until the game was out in early access. But something didn't feel right about this. The skins that were in it had red eyes and looked as if they belonged to a horror game. When he started the match, the gameplay was more disturbing than a regular Fortnite game. Whenever you killed someone, you wouldn't return to the lobby. The kills were more gruesome. And there was screaming. Whenever somebody got a victory royale, a link was sent to the player and it revealed a list of winners, with comments from all of them that said they had fun while playing. These players were were said to have all disappeared. The protagonist did some research after the fact. Turns out that the employee who added all of this stuff to the game was fired. The beta test was quietly and quickly removed. And at number six, face to face. Face to face is another one from Flipless Script. It follows the story of a player who was really excited about the Shogun being released. He had bought the same exact Shogun mask at his local game shop, putting the mask next to his nightstand, thinking it was like the coolest thing ever. Now, after playing hours and hours of Fortnite that night, he decided to call it a day, only to realize that the mask he had bought was no longer on his nightstand. Instead, it had moved over to the chair next to him as if it wanted to be closer to him. Thinking he was just tired and imagining things, he put it back on the nightstand and went to bed. In the middle of the night, he awoke with the mask on top of him. Thinking that was strange, he just went back to sleep. The next day after work, he jumped into Fortnite, cleaning up in his first solo match. Feeling on top of the world, he headed back to the lobby, only to notice something peculiar. The mask on his Shogun skin appeared to be a deeper, darker red color, as if it was kill activated. Blood started to drip from the mask. A noise that comes through his speakers, the drip, drip, drip. He decides to go into another match. The dripping noise grows louder. Strange. That's when he notices in real life that his mask is on the floor. Picking up, he's startled. There's blood all over his hands after he touches it. It too was dripping. Freaking out, he washes his hands, wraps a towel over the mask, and hides it in the attic, deciding that he'll deal with it later. He kept playing Fortnite, and as the hours went by, he begins to smell something, a coppery scent. That's when he hears the dripping noise again. He looks up. His ceiling is dripping blood. The narrator goes up to the attic, retrieves the mask, and takes it outside to the fire pit in his backyard and sets it on fire. When he returns to his game, he sees that his shogun skin no longer has a mask on, as if the two were linked. That night, when he drifts off to sleep, he dreams of the mask, learning it was built from the bones of victims in the samurai era, painted with the blood of those victims. He wakes up and can't see. He touches his face. The mask was on him. He tried to take it off, but it was stuck. And then he hears a voice say, Thank you for your body. It will serve me well. I'm glad we can meet face to face. And at number five, crawlers from Reaper Play Z. This story's narrator begins by telling us how he and his friends decided to drop into Lonely Lodge. When the narrator's character landed, he saw something horrific. A nest of spiders had emerged from the ground and started crawling about everywhere. In real life, he felt something on his shoulder, but just before he turned to look, his friends started yelling at him over chat. There were enemies incoming and he needed to be prepared. So he decided to focus on the game. But the more he played, he couldn't shake the feeling that all over his body, under his clothes, it felt as if he had tiny bugs crawling along his skin. They started biting. Finally, he looked down and pulled off his shirt, and to his disgust, he saw what looked like baby spiders on his chest. He ran into the bathroom, ignoring his friends over the mic. When the spiders were gone and he flushed them down the toilet, he returned to his computer, and his friends blamed him for throwing the match. They did not believe him about the spiders. So they started up another match, this time choosing to land at Haunted Hills. The spiders are back, all over the graveyard. One of his friends approached, and next thing he knew, he heard his friends screaming over chat, and our narrator knew that he was experiencing the same thing he had. The same thing happens again and again and again with his entire team of friends. Eventually, all of his friends had been attacked by spiders in real life and had ditched the game, and it was just our narrator playing. Going into a solo match, he realized that he didn't see spiders anywhere. 
But that's when it happened. He spotted a large shadow lurking behind him. He turned around in the game to see the most shocking of things, a giant spider looming above him. He watched it swallow another player whole. Luckily our narrator had a rocket launcher and fired it at the spider resulting in a gruesome explosion. His game crashed returning him to the lobby. He ended the story with saying that if you land in a game and see spiders, leave the match immediately. It's really for your own good. Moving on to number four, the smoke grenade. This one comes from YouTube channel Mr. Squidzel. It tells of the smoke grenade weapon that was removed from the game a little while back. The protagonist of the story woke up one morning and booted up Fortnite to discover that the smoke grenades were back in the game and available to use in a limited time game mode for solos. He thought this was really weird because this rarely happens. So anywho, he gave it a go and starting the match, nothing looked different. As he progressed, he found smoke grenades in a chest, but they were kind of odd. There was no rarity, no info, nothing showing up above them. But he grabbed him anyway. That's when he noticed that one of his favorite Twitch streamers was also in the same match as him, having the stream playing on the side on his phone while he was playing Fortnite. Excited, he kept moving, hoping to cross paths with them eventually. Shortly afterwards, he came upon some other players and used the smoke grenades, but didn't manage to get any damage on them. As he quickly reloaded, he noticed that the players he threw the smoke grenades at had completely disappeared after the smoke cleared. He didn't see them run away, and he didn't get to see them be eliminated either. Next thing he knew, on the side feed, it said the username of the player he had just attacked, along with something that said they had been taken by the smoke. But he thought again, I didn't see an elimination. So he kept moving, and he used the grenades again later on, and the same thing happened. In the feed, it said the player was taken by the smoke. Finally, it was the end of the game. And lucky for him, it was him versus the Twitch streamer. The two go at it, they build a bunch of stuff, shoot at each other, and then he decides to use the smoke grenade on him. He disappears. No elimination shows up, but the victory royale is announced. Feeling quite proud, he looks over to the Twitch streamer's stream that he had on his phone to see the reaction. Instead, he saw smoke rising around the streamer in real life, that filling up his room. The streamer started to scream, and then when the smoke cleared, he was gone. Up next, number three, the skin. This one comes from a YouTuber named Neo. His creepypasta season zero we talked about on one of our previous Fortnite creepypastas lists. He's now got a follow up to that one on his channel too, so definitely go check it out after this video. Anywho, the skin follows the story of a gamer who was really good at Fortnite, but stopped playing after an encounter with a mysterious skin. It was around season four when this occurrence happened. He noticed that a new skin was available in the store called the Consumer which didn't have an image, just a gold background. When he got it, he noted that it looked like a default skin, but it was a progressive one, so he decided to give it a go regardless. When he showed it off to his friends, they said that he wasn't wearing a new skin, and they just assumed it was a glitch. As he played a match with it, he noticed that his skin was making weird noises whenever it was hit. As he continued to play, the skin went up a stage, and it had become reddish, eventually starting to mutate, growing boils on its arms. When people were knocked out by him, they would crawl on the ground and beg for mercy. None of his friends in the match could hear or see the things he was experiencing, though. They also couldn't see the consumer in the store. The next round, the consumer's skin had gotten worse, with its face split open like a fleshy flower. And the round after that, well, his character took control of itself, getting a slew of kills. He won the match, but the Victory Royale banner never appeared. That's when his friends started to notice that something was off with the skin. They could start to see its red fleshy body appear. It then said out loud, I can't thank you enough for letting me out. I have achieved the Victory Royale, so now I must kill you. Then lunged towards the player's screen. The next few minutes was a battle for control, the skin versus the player. The player edged it closer to the edge of the mountain that they were on, and his friends started shooting at the character too. Eventually the character was knocked to the ground and died. Finally, the Victory Royale banner appeared. That's when one of his friends opened up the shop and said, Hey guys, there's a new skin available. It's called the Consumer. Dun dun dun. Up next, number two, The Rift. The Rift tells the story of a player who was super excited about season five of the game. Once playing it, he fell in love with the rifts and loved being able to run through rifts, especially when he had a bad start. It was super fun and helped him win twice as much as he used to. One night while playing, he went over to Paradise Palms searching for a rift, but the one that he found looked a little bit different than the others he had seen. It looked more like a black hole. Thinking it was a glitch, he ran through it anyway. Except this time, rather than skydiving, he was elsewhere, a place that didn't look like the rest of the game. There was a river made out of lava, buildings were made out of bones, and there were people crying in agony. That's when he took a closer look to realize that those people were the bodies of players that he had previously killed, crying out to him. Traumatized, he tried to get away, but the dead players continued to talk to him, telling him secrets about the game and what to expect from the future. They kept repeating a date too, followed by another date, over and over again. That's when he realized that they were saying his birthday, meaning the latter date had to be the date of his death. That's when his game crashed, since the player has desperately been looking for another rift like that one, but hasn't been able to find one since. And finally in at number one, Zozo the Demon. Zozo the Demon, our final one from Flipless Script, is one of the longest creepy passes on our list today, and it's damn good. So it starts off with the narrator telling us that he bought the Ark, but felt duped. Now, for starters, the skin, which is supposed to be female, 
was male. He also looked rough, having burnt armor and blacked frayed wings instead of, you know, the gold armor and the regular wings. Now, backtracking a bit, the narrator tells us that a few days ago he stumbled upon a Ouija board. Having nothing to do, he decided to give it a go even though he was alone. After asking it a series of questions, nothing happens, exactly what he expected. He's about to put it away when it starts to move, spelling out the word Zozo. From there, Zozo continues to communicate with him. Being a cynic, narrator starts asking it questions that it couldn't possibly know the answers to. He asks it about his cousin who had died recently, to which it responds by spelling out the words drunk driver, which is how he died, in a car accident because of a drunk driver. Naturally, our narrator freaks out and puts the board away, tucking it into the attic. Trying to feel better, he googles Zozo and turns out that Zozo is actually a real thing that other people had encountered. As he continues to read things about Zozo online, he comes across an article that makes him terrified. He never said goodbye to the spirit, he just put the board away, meaning he never severed the connection to him and Zozo. Now that night, he has a dream about Fortnite. He's wearing a new skin, a demon with charcoal feathers, who looks like he came right out of hell. The next day was when he saw Ark in the shop and bought her. After Ark appeared otherwise, he tried other skins instead, but the game would not let him equip anything else. It would always revert to this strange, evil looking skin. Now, the first match he was in, he died early on, but instead of being transported out of the game, like usual, by that robotic machine that collects you, his character, who he begins to call Zozo, turns around, facing him. Zozo jumps at him, filling up his monitor. Petrified, the player gets up and runs out of his room, only to trip on something in the hallway. Looking down, he realizes that the object that tripped him is none other than the Ouija board. It starts to spell something out on its own. You will die. Afraid that he needs to do something quick to stop his impending doom, he goes back onto Fortnite to discover that the skin no longer exists. Instead of Ark, the name that appears is Zozo, and the skin isn't even there, as if it had left the game. That's when he felt something cold on his shoulder. He looked up. It was Zozo in the flesh. Despite his presence, our narrator runs into the hallway, going straight to the Ouija board. He spells out goodbye. Zozo screams, trying to claw at our narrator, but he was starting to fade. Our narrator grabs the Ouija board, grabs some matches, and lights it on fire out in his backyard. Zozo running after him stops midair and basically explodes. The narrator goes back to Fortnite to discover that Ark has returned to what she should normally look like. That night, he dreams of Zozo in Fortnite. The demon tries to tell him that he can haunt him in his dreams and that they're still connected. That's when our narrator remembers something. He didn't burn the planchette, just the board. And that's when he hears Zozo's horrific voice in his ear, you will still die. All right, there we have it, friends. Which of these creepypastas was your favorite? And have you seen the first four parts of our list? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know. If you dug this video, spread the love, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Gaming for more game-themed creepypastas. We also have a nifty little playlist currently flashing on your screen that you might dig, so give it a click. In the meantime though, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you all in the next video. Creepy pastas. Who doesn't love a good scary story? Well, turns out all of you guys adore them dearly, and that's why we're back with the top 10 Fortnite creepy pastas part three. We've got a great selection for you guys this time around, and even a sequel story from one of our original ones that we talked about in our part one list. As always, please go check out the individual channels of each of these storytellers to see more creepy pastas from them. All right, so with that in mind, let's get to it, guys. Number 10, Hearing Things. Starting off our list is a creepypasta from the biggest Fortnite creepypasta storyteller on YouTube, currently, Flip the script. In this one, our protagonist tells us how he and his buddy Brent left playing Fortnite together. While solos were fun, playing duos was amazing. They had great teamwork and chemistry, and they kicked some serious butt. They even wanted to start playing competitively. Unfortunately though, Brent had died in a tragic accident, and was hit by a drunk driver. Our protagonist struggled a lot through this time, and when Brent's mother was going through her son's things, she gave our protagonist Brent's Fortnite limited edition headset as a gift, telling him that Brent would have wanted that, and that he's the only one who deserves to have it. He decided to use it, and played a solo game in Fortnite. It was like the headset was a good luck charm, and he was killing it. And it was like he had a piece of Brent still with him, and that was really comforting. It helped him cope. After a few more games though, something odd began to happen. He kept hearing strange noises, like breathing, even though no one was in his party and he was playing solos. He examined the headset, but nothing looked out of the ordinary. So he reset his Xbox, and everything went back to normal. But as soon as he loaded up the game again and entered a match, he heard the breathing again, and the sound of someone saying the word hello over and over again. It sounded like Brent. Eventually he called out, saying, saying, Brent? And the voice responded, saying, what's up man, how have you been? They carried on a conversation for a bit, and Brent manages to answer all of his questions, questions that only Brent would know the answers to. That night, our protagonist has a nightmare of Brent being hit by the drunk driver. He wakes up and hears noises coming from the headset even though his Xbox is turned off. The voice tells him to go to the spot where Brent died, so he does. 
He drives over, and that's when he sees a ghost that looks like Brent. That's when our protagonist is hit by a car himself. He comes to and hears a voice that says, stay away. Up next, number nine, the one that crawls. This creepypasta from YouTuber O1G tells of a player who was playing Fortnite and started getting weird chills while playing. Playing Fortnite on a daily basis, the protagonist used to be a really good player, the best in his friend group, until he started getting these weird chills, and this itch that would go up and down his neck and feel like it was burrowing into his skin. To the objective eye of all of his friends and parents in real life, Nothing was there, but the player kept feeling it. It started ruining his focus on the game. His friends didn't believe him and started to tease him for how he was becoming crappier at Fortnite. Two weeks later, as this continued, he took a week off playing the game. The itching stopped entirely. A week after that, he returned to the game and everything went back to normal. The crawling and itching were entirely gone, so the player brushed it off. But then something weird started happening when he and his friends would take down other players. A glitch of sorts. As they shot players and they dropped to the ground and started crawling, their heads would start turning around and going upside down. It was very odd. He didn't think much of it at the time. Time, but a week later, one of his friends, who was in the match with him, started getting an itch similar to the protagonist's. It was as if this itch was contagious, and if you kept playing Fortnite while having this itch, you would share a similar fate to those who had seen crawling. That's where the creepypasta ends, unfortunately. But one can only imagine that those who get the itch and continue to play endure a terrible fate, with their own heads twisting backwards like their characters in the game. And at number eight, the sphere. This one is about the sphere, the giant floating ice sphere that exploded over the island and left it covered in snow and zombies. Now, the narrator of this story tells about a unique and creepy experience that he had when the sphere first appeared in the game. He says that the first time he logged into the game, when the event started, he was surprised to find himself watching a terrifying cutscene of Polar Peak. The sphere started to move around to all of the places that the cube had previously corrupted. Now when it returned to Polar Peak, he saw a frozen cube emerge from the castle there, looking utterly destroyed. That's when the most terrifying thing happened. The cube fused with the sphere, with the sphere rising up, exploding, destroying Polar Peak entirely. The castle was in pieces and blood was everywhere, with corpses of players lying Lying around. What was this? Surely this wasn't intentional and put in the game. From there, the game loaded up and everything seemed off. The season read that it was season 999. The map the player was on only showed Polar Peak marked up in red. Everywhere else was covered in lava. Having no choice but to land at Polar Peak, he made his way there. When he landed, he saw that the dragon eggs there were cracked. With the baby dragons dead, their corpses visible. He took a closer look, and that's when one of the dragons woke up. The player jolted backwards. The dragon tore off his character's head, killing him, and every Everything went black. And at number seven, burn team leader from Flip Less Script. Here we have another one from Flip Less Script that's 4th of July themed. That's for all of our American viewers out there. So the narrator warns those to not fire off fireworks in real life. They appear to be the firework team leader in Fortnite, but they are anything but. They love the smell of fireworks, they are obsessed with them, and how they look in the sky. They tell of a legend of how using fireworks can summon him, and that if you shoot off fireworks, he'll pull out a grenade and really give you an explosive holiday that you won't forget. If you bought the firework team leader skin and shoot fireworks without them, they'll become angry, and their other persona, the burned team leader, will come out and come for you. You won't see him next to you pulling that grenade pin. Short but sweet. Moving on to number six. The Emote. The Emote is a creepypasta by YouTuber Super Danny 200, and this was their very first creepypasta. So, well done. In the story, it was summertime and our protagonist had just gone home from summer school. They turned on their PlayStation. Before getting into a match of Fortnite, they decided to check out the shop. That's where they found a brand new emote, but it was a little weird. There was no name or title and no description. In the emote card, the character was holding a bloody knife. Intrigued, they tried to preview it, and it was really intense. Their character, wearing the vortex skin as per usual, raised a knife and stabbed an invisible character, and blood went everywhere. So he was like, hey, I'm just gonna buy it, having enough V-Bucks to afford it. From there, he headed over to a solo match, landing in Tilted Towers. Looking for loot, he placed a trap and managed to kill another player. In victory, he decided to use the bloody knife emote and just check it out. As soon as he did though, he heard cries and a demonic voice. The voice said, I will hunt you down tonight. I know where you live. Freaked out, he left the match and decided to play something else. Later that night, he turned his PlayStation back on, only to hear the same demonic voice say, I am back. There is no escape. He cried out, who's there? And the voice answered, look out your window. To his shock and horror, he saw his character, wearing the vortex skin as per usual, holding a bloody knife. Up next, number five, hyper-realistic Fortnite. Another one for Mr. Gruesome at this number. So this story follows a player who hops on Fortnite one evening after getting home. Logging on, he begins a solo match. Playing as usual, he lands a dusty divot and starts to loot. He gets his first kill, but then he notices something odd in the distance. It's a default skin, except it didn't quite look like a default skin. Getting closer, he realized why it looked so odd. It was pretty realistic. He shot at it with his sniper, 
but rather than eliminating the player, something else happened. The bullet lodged into the player's skin, and he saw blood starting to pour out from the wound. Feeling nauseous, he exited out of the match, thinking that his imagination was playing tricks on him. Back in the main menu though, he noticed that his own skin started to look realistic too. Every single skin looked way more realistic than it should, and when he went to the default skin, it was bleeding. It wasn't his imagination. He turned off the game and shut off his Xbox. Thinking it was a horrible glitch, he just went to bed. But as he closed his eyes, he began to see the skins bleeding and had horrible nightmares. And at number 4, Lying Within. We actually covered one of these videos by Jordan Persigatti in our last video. Essentially, there's a narration of a creepypasta while he draws a Fortnite themed illustration that is absolutely brilliant. Anywho, in this creepypasta, which was inspired by the Raven from Fortnite as its creepy antagonist, this one is about a high school kid who tells about him and his friends going on a trip together after high school. They all bonded over online gaming, particularly Fortnite. One of his friends named Bridget he had originally met on World of Warcraft, and she showed him the ways of the game, which is how they formed a bond. Turns out that the two of them went to the same school, and the summer after graduation, the protagonist, Sean, Bridget, and their two friends, Ryan and Elise, ended up taking a road trip to an abandoned mansion as a big final hurrah before they all parted ways to go to university. As they were grabbing lunch just outside of the town with the mansion, a crazy old man approached them and started shouting, there's more than brick and mortar in the walls. Once they got into the old house, they were in awe of its immensity and eeriness. Sean snapped some photos as they broke into the boarded up house. Inside the house, it looked as if it was a hundred years old. The group split up up and Sean found a piano. He sat down at his bench to discover the piano still worked, so he played a few keys. His playing was interrupted by one of his friends, Elise, screaming as she almost fell off a balcony. He ran over to her and Elise told them that someone had tried to push her off that balcony. He decided it was time to leave, but before going, Sean wanted to snap a few more pictures before they headed out. Going upstairs, he snapped some more photos and went into the bathroom to grab a few pictures. Looking up from his camera, he spotted a shadowy figure, which appeared out of nowhere. Freaked out, Sean called out to his friends, hoping that it was just them. But as he backed up towards the other side of the bathroom, Bathroom, the figure started to bolt towards him. Sean turned and ran. The figure was chasing him, but he managed to make it down the stairs. Looking back, he saw the figure jump down towards the foyer, sprinting towards him. Sean made a run for it, but ended up tripping and fell down the stairs leading down to the basement. He looked up in time to see the figure at the top of the stairs and the basement door shut. The whole room was dark as he heard footsteps coming down the stairs. Then, his camera, which had landed a few feet away from him, flashed. He reached for it and looked at its screen, which revealed the last photo. It was Sean holding his hands up to block the flash from his eyes, and behind him were hands reaching out for him. And and Elise's body was jutting out from the brick wall in the background. The old man who had been in the diner before with them was also visible in the camera screen. That's when Sean heard the voice in his ear, I told you there was more than brick and motor in them walls. And at number 3, Trog Terror. Another one from Flip the Script at this number. The narrator tells the story about the real danger that comes from spotting the Yeti in Fortnite. Now he was at level 71 of that season's battle pass, and he had managed to unlock Trog, the awesome Yeti skin in the game. Excited, he eagerly equipped him only to swear that he heard Trog speak, saying something the likes of Trog go home, over and over, as if it were a taunt. The issue was though, our humble narrator soon discovered that he was the only one who could hear what Trog was saying. Now, a few days went by with the player unlocking more levels in the battle pass. Nothing out of the ordinary. But one morning, he woke up early and decided to play Fortnite before work. He noticed that Trog was talking again, now saying something different. Trog must go home. Now, after googling it, he discovered that there was a hidden yeti cave in the game and perhaps he had stumbled on the beginnings of an easter egg. He was wrong. Not really in the mood to complete a challenge, he decided to just equip his raven skin instead. But when he got to the lobby, he was wearing the trog skin. Weird. It kept saying, trog must go home. Eventually, growing tired of this, he sought out the cave. When he arrived, he was shocked to see trog take over his character. Trog entered and went up to a part of the cave and started shoveling snow, revealing a cold body, another yeti. Trog then split from the character, turning the character into a default skin. And trog, well, he didn't look like he normally did. Instead, he looked like a demonic, bloody yeti, covered in red stains. He turns to the character and says, you're trog's dinner. The body of the other Yeti comes to life and the two of them begin to feast on the character's body. The story ends with the narrator warning others to not go into the cave with Trog equipped. Otherwise, you'll die. And at number 2, Summer Scares from Flipless Script. Getting seasonal for you all with another one from Flip the Script at this number. This follows the story of a player who had an unfortunate situation during the 14 days of summer event launched in the game. He witnessed a cutscene, something that most players never saw. It was a beach party and all of the skins were there except for Drift. Drift had bad luck and needed to find beach clothes. According to the scene, the last person to show up at the party had to buy all of the drinks and food for dinner that night. So Drift went shopping, got everything he needed, but made a stop at Neo Tilted. The cutscene didn't show what he grabbed, but can continued with Drift heading to the party at the beach. He began cooking all of the food for dinner, working the grill, appearing entirely sane and happy, despite, you know, having to buy and cook everyone dinner. The cutscene faded to later in the day with everyone at a large table in eating and enjoying the food. All of them except for Drift, who was not eating. Someone asked if they had seen Jonesy from Neo Tilted. The camera then panned to an empty seat. 
Drift said nothing. Finally, the camera moved to where Drift was grilling initially and paused over the trash can where there was a package of meat. On the package was Jonesy. They were eating Jonesy. The cutscene ended and our narrator felt sick, hoping that no one saw what they had seen. And finally, in at number one, The Raven. Lastly, we have yet another one from Flipless Script called The Raven. The Raven is pretty popular, with over 277,000 views. So what's it about? The protagonist of this story tells of how they were so excited to get the Raven skin, and when it finally came out, they were overjoyed to use it, playing for hours on end with it. Eventually, it was time for bed though. But that's when their night went from great to worse. They had a dream that the Raven broke into their bedroom hovered over them and murdered them. Jolting awake, they looked around the room, collecting their bearings. But that's when they noticed that a pair of purple eyes were glowing back at them from across the room. Claire heard her voice say, never more. He thinks he's still dreaming. But then the eyes got closer and closer, until he saw the whole body of the figure, revealing that it was none other than the Raven. The Raven said once again, never more. That's when the player's Xbox flickers on and turns on Fortnite. Without realizing what he's doing, he gets out of bed and begins to play the game, loading in solos. He's crying, unable to move his body, panicking. He goes to Tomato Town, deciding to play it safe since he's afraid of what will happen if he loses. The Raven watches on, staring at him intently. The player, running to make it out of the storm, is then sniped and knocked out of the match. That's when his TV goes static. Slowly, he turns to look at the raven. Raven lets out a piercing scream and then says, never more. This is when the player blacks out. Next thing he knows, he wakes up in the hospital. The doctor there told him that he was the victim of a house robbery. A robber broke into the home and beat him, shot him, and left him near death. Confused, the player asks questions, but the doctor says that he'll go get his attending doctor to talk to him through his upcoming surgeries. A look of confusion still sits across the player's face. So before the doctor leaves the room, he tries to comfort the player by saying, don't worry, Dr. Nevermore is great. All right, there we have it, guys. So what are your thoughts on all the Fortnite creepypastas that we've talked about so far on our list? Which ones were your favorites? And which ones did you not really like? Give us a share in those comments below and let us know. If you haven't seen part one or part two of this list, be sure to head on over to our channel and click the playlist currently flashing on your screen to check them out and check out our other videos too. And feel free to subscribe and hang out with us some more. In the meantime though, thanks for watching everybody. I'll catch you on the next video. Hey everybody, welcome back to Top 10 Gaming. We're back at it again with another list of Fortnite creepypastas for you guys. Let's just cut to the chase. With some of these, we return to previous creepypasta authors who know how to craft up a good scare, and others are brand spanking new. And while all of them might not be totally terrifying, they sure are entertaining. So with that in mind, let's get to it. This is our Top 10 Scary Fortnite Creepypastas, Part 4. Starting us off in at number 10, Tomato Head's Revenge. We're starting off our list with a sequel to one of our previous creepypastas that we highlighted in a prior list by Fortnite creepypasta king, Flipless Script, called Tomato Head Terror. Now for context in that one, the beef boss took over all of Fortnite with his franchise and killed Tomato Head in the process. As you can guess by the title, Tomato Head gets his revenge on Beef Boss, describing revenge as a dish best served cold, of course. Now the story starts off by revealing that Beef Boss has had trouble since the destruction of Tomato Town. Tomato Head became a martyr, a god to the people, which spawned a cult. It got so bad that Beef Boss had to go into hiding, loading up on firearms to protect himself. He had dreams of being killed, with the Tomato God being his own personal Grim Reaper. The people of Greasy Grove decided to resurrect Tomato Head as Tomato God, and to do so needed a sacrifice. So who did they want? Well, Beef Boss, of course. They flooded his hideout that night, taking Beef Boss to the Tomato God Temple, where they brutally sacrificed him, causing his blood to pour out, giving birth to the Tomato God. Now for more creepypastas like these, please check out Flipless Script's channel and check out his Patreon while you're at it. He's doing some really, really good stuff. Up next at 9, Glitch. This creepypasta comes from YouTuber Mr. Gruesome. The narrator, a 14 year old in middle school, tells of how he was playing Fortnite one night when his family wasn't home. To start off the night, he began with some solos, landing in retail row in his first match. He opened up a chest, looted up, and that's when he spotted another player. Turning around, he was ready to shoot at them, but all of a sudden, the game glitched, and he was outside of the house that he was in, with the game informing him that he had one kill. Thinking that was odd, he continued to play. He left retail, and eventually found another player. He was about to shoot at them when the game glitched again. And where did he end up? Outside of the same house in retail row. Getting sick of this, he ended up leaving the match and started up a new one. Jumping out of the battle bus, the game suddenly glitched, and he ended up outside that same house in retail row. Frustrated, he turned off his Xbox. He decided to get some fresh air clear his head. So he went to go outside of his house. But in a blink of an eye, as he opened his front door, he realized that he wasn't stepping outside. He was back in his bedroom. He went to his front door again and bam, back in his room. 
He tried again and again and again and kept getting the same result. So he tried breaking a window to get outside, but as soon as he jumped out, the same thing happened. He then states that he's been stuck in his house for about three days now, and he hasn't seen his parents since. He can't get out of the house, and none of his technology works. He explains that he's recording this and hopes to explain to whoever finds it that he's stuck inside of a massive glitch. Up next at 8, AFK. This one is from Flipless Script. Another one. This creepypasta is about a player's friend going AFK, away from keyboard, during a game of Fortnite. The protagonist's friend, Andrew, was hilarious to play Fortnite with, although he had a tendency to go AFK. This was towards the end of season 3, and our protagonist noticed an extra challenge that they hadn't completed called AFK. The description of the challenge read Follow the sign in Greece for something that will knock you out of your seat. Our protagonist and Andrew made a point of landing in Greasy Grove to complete the challenge, although they noticed that there weren't a lot of other players landing there, which was odd, considering it was part of the challenge. They see the sign on one of the buildings outside to discover a note that read, go to Snobby Shores and get a single kill. So they follow those instructions. When they get there, they manage to find a duo and knock them out. Two identical messages then pop up over those defeated players amongst their loot that reads, acquire 666 amount of wood and make a one by one fort with the materials. Unsure if a building Building that high was possible, the two of them started collecting wood and built the fort. After building it, they realized that the stairs they had built had disappeared, now replaced with a sign that read, Jump Down. Worried that if they jumped down, they would die, our protagonist asks if Andrew wants to go first. Andrew jumps down, and after a few seconds, it says he needs to be revived. Over the mic, our protagonist tries talking to Andrew, but gets no response. So our protagonist thinks that maybe he's gone AFK. So instead, he gets off and starts playing some solo matches instead. This is when he notices that the AFK challenge has disappeared. The next day, he sees that Andrew is online on Fortnite. He joins his game and tries to talk to him, but there's still no response. So he starts spamming Andrew, worried that this isn't just a broken mic situation. Later, he goes into a new lobby and Andrew joins. He tries talking to Andrew, happy that he's not just AFK. But that's when Andrew's speaker turns on and a voice replies, Andrew isn't here right now. And at number seven, the back bling. This one starts off with our narrator telling us that he was randomly gifted new back bling, an item called Voodoo Doll. It looked like his player character, but in doll form. Curious, he equips it and goes into a solo match. Now, when he gets into conflict, his back bling gets hit. And the player, in real life, feels a sharp, unusual pain in his own back. This continues to happen. Everything that happens in the game has a physical effect on him. Assuming that it's nothing but a weird coincidence that his mind is playing tricks on him, he just continues to play anyway. That's when he knows that the voodoo doll, on his character, had blood dripping down its side. In real life, he lifts up his shirt to see a wound of his own, bleeding. He gets out of the game as soon as he can, and never looked back. Moving on to six, Tommy the Tomato from Fallout Boy Man. This story follows a player who encountered a freaky looking version of Tomato had in their game, who claimed that his name was Tommy. After being thoroughly creeped out by the strange player, our narrator tried to report the encounter to Epic Games, only to get a mysterious gibberish message response. So they began a new match, only to come across Tommy again. Trying to avoid him, it seemed that Tommy would go everywhere he went, ruthlessly killing players in a way they had never seen before in the game. After winning the match, the narrator fell asleep or he had awful nightmares. Tommy appeared to him in those dreams, demanding for him to play. Compelled, our narrator got up and began to play again, and Tommy appeared, with his killings being just as gruesome. They had an unspoken agreement. Our narrator would play the game, and Tommy would go around and kill brutally, but would never touch our narrator, always making sure that he won matches. Talk about a grim trade-off. Moving on to five, followed two. It's a follow-up. Get it? Because. It, it's followed. Yeah, I'll be here all week, guys. Anywho, this is another one from Flip the Script, and if you haven't, you should head on over there and watch Followed, because this is the second part to it. Or check out our Creepypastas part one list to find out what it's all about before listening to this number. Followed 2 tells the story of Carter, who was the head detective on the Followed case. Still wanting to solve the case, he sought out two individuals who were known to deal with video game related cases, who go by the names of Chris and Jay in the story. Chris and Jay came into town, and Carter picked them up from the airport. At the police station, they read the coroner's report. They decided to pay the deceased victim's mother a visit. After finding what appeared to be suspicious evidence, they take the mother down to the station to question. Both Jay and Chris, after talking to her, believe that the death of the gamer was not supernatural as they initially thought, but rather that the mother and her boyfriend had killed the boy. That night, they stake out the boyfriend's house while waiting for the warrant to take a look. The next morning inside the house, what they find is eerie. There's a recording that repeats the phrase, I dare you to kill me, over and over again. There's a bunny rabbit suit. And in the trash, there's a ski mask. Boyfriend is then charged for murder. Carter ends off the story by saying that sometimes creepy and scary isn't always supernatural. Sometimes, the scariest thing of all is finding out that the people that we trust can create the worst horrors. Moving on at number four, 
are the Wukong. This one comes from a channel called Snipe2G, and it's a remake of another creepypasta. See if you guys can figure out which one it is from our previous lists. It follows the story of a player who gets excited when they see their favorite skin, the Wukong, come back into the game shop. Finally having enough V-Bucks to afford it, he buys it and notices that it's not quite its usual color in its eyes. Instead, they're blood red. The player is concerned, so he decides to reach out to Epic Games, but they reply saying that there shouldn't be any glitches with that particular skin. After a quick Google search, he finds out that no one else has had this problem before. So he thinks nothing of it, despite being a little confused. It's probably just a bug. He starts a match, only to discover that with every kill, the Wukong's eyes would gradually become less red. Deciding that getting more kills is the answer to getting Wukong back to normal, he just grinds all night. When it's gone really late, he realizes that there's a strange noise coming from downstairs in real life inside of his house. It didn't sound like anything that he had heard before. So he calls his parents who weren't home, and they tell him not to worry because they're on their way back. But their arrival came too late. The player looked towards his bedroom door, and through the darkness in the hallway, he saw glowing red eyes. Thinking it was his dog, he was about to turn around and continue playing when he saw the owner of the eyes was moving slowly towards him in the shadows, coming into his room. That's when he realized it was the Wukong, watching him from the hallway. He passed out, waking up sometime later in the hospital. The doctor told him that he shouldn't worry, and that his attending doctor, Dr. Wukong, was on his way. Up next, number three, The Donation. From YouTube channel NextGen Entertainer, the donation is a tale of a player named Ricky, an ordinary guy who was having a pretty rough time in his life and was struggling to make rent each month. So as a get rich quick scheme, he decided he was going to try to make money off of playing Fortnite. He wanted to be like Ninja or Myth and make some cold hard cash from it. He set up a Twitch account, setting up his first stream as Ricky Plays. After about 10 minutes of streaming and no views, he received a comment from a Twitch player named Vanguard13. Thinking that it was odd since his stream had no viewers, he read it, and it said, so you want to be famous? He replied saying, hell yeah, I'd die to be famous. Famous. And the account responded immediately with a follow up comment that said, Remember me. Time passed. Ricky managed to get about 2,000 followers on Twitch and played every day. One day after an hour of streaming and grinding solos, he had about 87 viewers. Although he never really interacted with the people watching his stream, unless they donated to him. He got a notification about someone donating him $10, and attached to the donation was a comment that read, Remember me. As soon as he read that comment, Ricky lost control of his character and was sniped from 278 meters away. His screen went to the camera of the player who killed him, and that's when things got weird. It was someone wearing the raven skin, and the player was facing the screen, which is something that can't be done in Fortnite. The name of the player was Vanguard13. His stream then went dead. Ricky's monitor also went dead, so Ricky had to drive down to his local computer shop to pick up another. On the way there, he noticed a poster hanging outside of a store with the Fortnite raven skin and the words, Watch Ricky Plays. He went to the shop where the poster was hung outside and inquired about it, but they didn't know how it got there. When he brought them outside to show them, the poster was gone. From there on out, he kept seeing things written on walls that read, Watch Ricky Plays, and kept hearing creepy laughter. When he was back home, every banner ad that he encountered online was an ad for his Twitch channel. Thinking he was being stalked, he went down to the police station. While waiting, he got to chatting with an old woman, and eventually told her all the events that he had encountered. The old woman then looked at him for a moment, smiled, and then said the words, so you want to be famous? Ricky burst out of the police station, but to his surprise, the world around him had changed. He was in a graveyard with the raven, who was holding his Fortnite character's decapitated head. Ricky then woke up in a hospital bed, and the doctor had told him that he had been imagining all these horrors because of how addicted he was to playing games on his Twitch channel. Ricky eventually went home and decided to play a game of Fortnite to put his mind at ease. Seems like a great idea. A year later, Ricky was doing well. His stream had taken off and he had made himself a good chunk of change. Never had to worry about money anymore either. One day, while he was playing Fortnite on Twitch, he was given a ton of donations, all of which were only a dollar. Each donation had a message, a random number with a random letter. Confused, he thanked the viewer for the donations and continued the stream. After it ended, he couldn't stop thinking about those weird donations. He went onto his Twitch account to take a look at the messages again. That's when he put them together. The message read, So, you want to be famous? And at number two, didn't stick the landing. This creepypasta tells the tale of a gamer named Jared, a talented player who had gotten his fair share of wins and kills. But he was only human. He got eliminated a lot too. Anywho, Jared is playing Fortnite when he gets a message from his friend who asked him if he'd seen the news about the mass suicides. Jared's like, what? And his friend sends him a screenshot of the news channel that he's watching. People are committing mass suicide without any explanation, jumping from high heights in particular. It's like Bird Box, but not. So Jared, just a little freaked out, just decides to take his mind off it by playing another match in Fortnite. That's when he gets a strange compulsion. As he's jumping out of the battle bus, he decides to land on the highest point on the map that he can. Once he glides down to a high peak, the compulsion gets worse. Build. So he starts to build. Up, 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 and up, 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 and up. As if he's building a stairway up to the heavens. And when he's exhausted of all of his resources, he looks around the map. Players in firefights. All the locations he had previously traversed with joy. And he jumps. He doesn't know why. He just does. And out of nowhere, as soon as his character hits the ground, he falls off his chair in real life. An intense pain rifles through his body. He's on the floor and he can't move. He just lies there, knowing that death is impending. Now, side note, this creepypasta is by Chris Hum and worth giving a watch. Rather than just using gameplay, it's 
told from a POV angle, and it's actually kind of neat to see play out. And finally, in at number one, the devil was my dubs partner from Flip the Script. Last but not least, we have another one from Flip the Script to end off our video. This player begins his story by sharing an experience with us he had during duos. He got his partner, someone else playing on Xbox, but he wasn't really a fan of talking to random people, doing his best to not get trolled. This person, his partner, didn't talk, but the two of them began to work together really well initially, knocking out a few players. Eventually, after a few kills, his partner's mic turned on and he said, Michael, we better win or your soul is mine. The voice sounded demonic, to the point where the player actually thought it might have been coming from a voice changer. But more importantly, how did he know his name? They headed to Neo Tilted from Shifty Shaft. Creeped out still, they were attacked by another team, but he did his best to hold his own. His teammate went down, but likely he was able to get that team down on his own. He went over to his teammate and rebooted him. The teammate then goes on mic again and says, you almost went to hell. Freaking out, our narrator believed that this was real and that he was speaking to the devil. How else would he have known his name? There were 30 people left in the match, so he focused on winning, trying to ignore his panic. Now there wasn't a whole lot of action after that, up until there were six players left, with a circle closing in on Salty Springs. Everyone was in separate forts, shooting at one another. Our narrator managed to knock out one duo. The devil then went on his mic a third time and says, You've come so far, but second place is still a loss. He was right, but our player was shaking. He swore he could hear distant sounds of suffering in the game. After a few seconds of shooting at the final duo, there was a big battle and his partner goes down. Everyone was badly hurt. He heard over the mic, if you lose, everything you know and love will be gone. So he gave it his all, he couldn't fail. He stepped up, set a trap, killing both of his opponents. He was then returned to the lobby and greeted by a present from his teammate. The text read, see, I wasn't lying. He opened the gift. And to the horror of our narrator, he saw a photo of himself. Moments before he had initially begun the match with the devil. All right, there we have it, friends. Which one of these was your favorite? Let us know in those comments below. If you dug this video, spread the love, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Gaming for more lists just like this one and more creepy pastas. We've got a lot of them. Also, before you guys go, another big thanks to our sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends. Be sure to check them out in the video description below. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.